Okay, so in order to get the most out of our knowledge of for loops, we're going to have to increase our knowledge base of some other things in Java. And one of those things is string methods. So as we've discussed before, strings are actually objects. And so when you create a word like, let's say, just create a string called word. And I'm going to set it to comp sci. So when I create this word variable, it's not just a primitive data type. It is actually an object that has some methods and operations built into it. Uh, and one of those operations is called uh, length. So string.length uh, tells you the exact uh, number of characters that is in a string. And the reason that it's able to do that is because uh, when you declare this word string, it takes on this data and each character in this uh, word comp sci is put into an index from zero to one less than the number of characters that's in the word. So comp sci has seven letters just to make that a little less complicated. And uh, we're going to start numbering them from zero to six. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six is actually seven letters because we're starting from zero instead of one. So now that we have a grasp of that, we can uh, move on to some of the uh, methods that we can use on a word object like this. And one of them, again, is string.length. So the way we call string.length is by calling uh, the name of the uh, string and then adding dot length to the end. So it's basically simple dot notation the word object and then dot the method name. We've used this before, so we already know this. So let's go ahead and print that and see uh, see what happens, see if I get the right value back. So I'm going to system out print line word dot length. And as you can see, I get seven back or seven letters in comp sci. So I believe I got the right answer. Next method you probably need to know about is the index of uh, method. So let's start that. Uh, what the index of method does is it searches for a character within your string, uh, a ca actually a character or characters, so it can search multiple characters at once. And once it finds that uh, character or, uh, or set of characters, it will return the index number where those uh, letters occur. So to give you an example, I could say um, let's go with word.index of, and then in here I could search for the S that I know is in my word comp sci. So if I printed this out, I would get four. So if we look at this, I'm starting at zero here, and I got one, two, three, and four. I run into my S, so obviously that's going to return four. I could also search for multiple characters there. So I could say umps, or uh, actually umps, and if I search for that, it will say it's at 1 because 0, 1, that's where that O starts. And it sees that all these are in a row there, so it returns uh, the value of 1. So those are the two easy ones. Uh, and the really fun one uh, that allows us to do some cool things is substring. A substring allows you to take a section of the word and return it. So I can uh, take a section of the word from an index to another index and... Um, print that out or do whatever I want with it. So I'll give you an example of how we use that. Let's uh, take our word comp sci here and I'm going to say word, keep leaving the caps lock on, and let's go substring. It's uh, just a regular string method just like we've used with the other ones, except for this one takes uh, parameters and the parameter that it takes is a range. And so to give you an example, I would do uh, from range one to four. Uh, and 
keep in mind that when I put this four here, it's not going to go up to that four because just like with everything else in Java and with most programming languages, whenever you see a range, uh, the top of the range is usually usually exclusive. So it will go up to but not including that final number. And such is the case here. So that'll give me a substring from positions one through three. So I believe one's here because we got zero and then one. And so and then two and three I will get. So I should get OMP out of this. It's not going to give me the four because that's excluded from the range. So if I were to print this out. And another parenthesis on the end there. And let's print that out and see what we get. We get the OMP just like I predicted. And to simplify our lives a little bit, let's say we wanted to take um, a section of the word that starts, like say in the middle here in my comp site, and then we just want to go all the way to the end of the word. Well, there's a really easy way to do that, or all the all the way to the end of the string. Let's say I wanted to start at index two and go all the way to the end of that string. Well, all I have to do is put the two in here, and Java automatically assumes uh, if I just see that single number in the range, I'm going from there to the end of the number. So now if I print that out, I definitely start at two, zero, one, two, which is where the M is, and it goes all the way to the I, which is the end of comp sci. So the last string method I want to tell you about is called care at, and it basically it's the easiest one, so I'm not even going to change the print statement or anything. Uh, you just use same thing, string.careat, and in this case my string is word, so I'll say word.careat, and I got to capitalize the A there, and in the parameters you put an index, and it will return whatever character is at that index. So let's just leave this 2 in here from now, and in comp size 0, 1, 2, that's the M, so it should just return the M for me, and you can see I get an M back. So that's uh, pretty easy. That's how the uh, caret function works. So now that we know these, let's start to use them in a practical way in our loops. So we'll start with, uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's make a scanner object. Uh, scanner equals new scanner. And you can see that... You can see I've already imported the scanner here, so make sure you do that if you're following along. And I'm going to do a user prompt. And let's say, please enter a word. Pretty simple and basic. And let's go with a string word equals. Let's go with kb.next. Let's just do a single word. Let's not worry about a whole line right now. And so now I can create a for loop and I can say for and I'll start with int i. And I'll start it at zero. And this is cool. In my Boolean expression, I can say as long as i is less than the length of my word. So I can say word dot length. And if you remember length uh, returns uh, the 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 number of characters that I have in that word. So I'm iterate. I can iterate through each letter in the word just by setting up this boolean expression right here. So the loop is going to run as long as i is less than the length of my word, and then I can iterate up by one each time. So I'm starting at zero, uh, and I'm iterating up by one each time, and I'm going through my entire each letter in my entire word. Let's open this up so we can see it a little better. So why would I want to do that? Well, maybe I want to print this out vertically. So I can say system out print line. Uh, and I would say here, I could use another string method. I could say word dot care at I. So keep in mind that i is an integer, and it starts off at 0, so this would print i at 0. Then it would iterate up each time the loop runs. So each time this loop runs, I'm printing a character at the space 
one higher than I did the previous uh, loop. So each time I'm starting at zero, so I'm printing out the first letter in my word, then I'm printing out the second letter in my word, then I'm printing out the third letter in, the, in my word, and, I go, and I'm going all the way to the length of my word, so I'm printing every last letter in my word, and since I'm using print line, that's going to appear vertically. It'll skip a line each time. So I could run this, and I'll enter a word. I can just say sausage, and you can see it prints out sausage. So basically print line skips a line each time and it just prints uh, the first character at zero first, then it adds one, prints the second character, adds one, prints the second character until uh, I ends up being greater than the length of the word and then the loop exits. So now we want to do something even more fun, which is to make a shape out of a string using these loops so you can see how powerful they are. So let's keep most of this loop the way it is, but instead of word.caret in here, I would say word.substring from zero to i. So what that's going to do is it's going to start, it's going to print like a little Christmas tree pattern out of whatever word I put in as my input. So let's say uh, I put in a word it will print the first letter first because my I starting off at zero. So it will print substring from zero to zero, which is just the first letter in the word. Then it would move on from zero to one and it would print uh, the first two letters of the word. Then I moves on to two and the zero is staying constant. So I'm always starting from zero, but each time this loop runs, I'm printing more letters. So it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger until I get through the entire word length. And then finally, on the last line, it's going to print the entire word. So if we do this, uh, I guess I missed a parenthesis there. Let's try that again. And enter a word. Let's go with sausage again. And you can see here... Uh, it does sort of what we told it to do. Only thing is we left out the E on the end. And the easiest fix for that is instead of as long as I is less than word length, let's go less than or equal to. And that should do the trick. And if I put in sausage again, I get the whole word sausage. So I hope I didn't bake your noodle too bad uh, with this right now. Uh, what you need to understand in this one uh, is it's very important that this becomes progressively easier if you continue to just go over uh, the basic concepts that are in the loop. So this can look a bit complicated at first, but really if you break it down into its uh, smaller parts, it becomes uh, progressively less difficult. So remember that the four just means anything that's in this parentheses, I'm going to run the loop that many for that many times. Uh, so this gives me a start point and this gives me a stop point. So this is uh, my starter number, which is uh, my iterator, and it gives me a place to start. In this case, I started at zero. This is my escape condition. This tells me when my loop is going to exit, meaning as soon as this uh, Boolean expression returns false, at that point, then the loop is going to exit. And this is simply the iterator. It tells me what I'm going to iterate by, by how much, and whether it's going to be positive, negative, meaning forward or reverse iteration. So as soon as you have a firm grasp of what's going on inside these parentheses, uh, this becomes just a simple print statement, and it's not that big of a deal. And this becomes just a simple uh, word or a string method. So again, if you look at these all at once and your brain's kind of going crazy, just take a deep breath and kind of look at each individual parts and figure out what each part means and then slowly add the layers until you are ready to grasp the whole thing.